Um, you've worked with a lot of really great directors in the last few years, uh, people like Martin Scorsese and Jim Jarmusch and the Collins. This is your first time working with Spike Lee, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, what were your expectations like for, for working with them? And I mean, were they exceeded? Were they matched? Talk a bit about that. I don't, I don't know what my expectations were. I can't, I can't re remember, but they were definitely exceeded. I, I, I wasn't anticipating how familial his set it would be, that there were so many people that he'd been working with since Do the Right Thing, so obviously there's a shorthand to um, uh, comfort on set where it, it, immediately there's uh, egos are diffused and it, it's real, uh, very focused about the story that you're telling and there's no go-between between, between uh, Spike and the actors or anybody, he's, he's um, um, o open at all times to, to, to whoever. Um, I think I answered your question. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, how does he, uh, in terms of working with actors, what does he give you that helps you get to the places you need to, to go? He's very, He's a very big advocate about following instincts and following your first impulses, which is a different way of, of doing it. He likes to work very fast and you know, try to fit it in within a work day. Everybody gets in there uh, in the morning and then is, is at home for, for dinner, yeah. um, which is good. It, it's a, which, a different way of working, which is no more or less uh, uh, valid than someone that, who likes to do a lot of takes. It's just a, his way of doing it. And I feel like you can feel it in his films. What I like about them is they feel there's like this, um, you know, linear, linear story that's happening. There's the script and there's always this some abstract um, element that feels like very impulsive and urgent and um, that it's just as equally as um, truthful to the story as, um, you know, as a line written on the page. And everybody's, because the pace is so quick, there's no, everybody's on set, there's nobody's retreating to their, their trailers, and um, um, everyone's kind of around and, and they want to be. It feels like an ongoing conversation all day. This movie, The Town, is so surprising um, because uh, I think the story is kind of surprising as well. What did you think the first time you heard the story of, of Ron Stallworth? I mean, like most people, I feel like it's an unbelievable story. We didn't like, we we're, weren't thinking much about tone or how you play tone. I feel like it's that kind of like how life is. I mean, if anything, life, I guess, would be a comedy, but it's uh, you know, living in a genre. So we weren't thinking about that as we were doing it. Right. Uh, did you meet the real Rob? I did, yeah. He came yeah. to the um, first table read. Yeah. And then I called him. Um, uh, when we were um, during pre-production stuff, just to ask him a couple questions. But then during during shooting, he wasn't around. But I've been seeing him and his wife and all the talking about it afterwards. Did you glean anything from him uh, in conversation that helped inform your character at all? Or? Yeah, he, he said a good uh, detail about improv actually, because yeah. um, you know these undercover cops are acting for their lives and. Um, you know, you don't want to create a character that is so distant from um, who you are as a person because of the, because you have to back it up. Uh, so when it came to improv, you had to think on his feet a lot. He wouldn't deviate very much from um, from who he was, which is interesting in, as far as playing it because of a lot of times he's, my character is saying things that, you know, obviously are the opposite of who he is, and, and that he's surprised by how connected he is to, you know, his personal heritage, and um, but that was always a, an interesting thing. You bring up your character's personal heritage, and I think one of the uh, the thing that's a line that sums up your character's journey is uh, you're talking to John David Washington, and he says something about having skin in the game, mm -hmm. you know, and it's really. Can you talk a bit about? Uh, the arc that your character takes, because at first, you know, he's like not wanting to really involve himself with this at all. But I mean, he does have a, you know, a very personal stake in, you know, this fight against the Klan. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that are going on. He, um, um, 
I think he's maybe trained himself out of self-preservation to not take his work home with him, I guess. There's not really a better way of saying that. And, um, and that to kind of survive and do this job, you have to, it almost there has to be a, a level of it being impersonal. Um, but then how can you not let what you're saying affect you and, and maybe actually sometimes taking it personal is, uh, actually informs your decision and makes you better at your job. Um, and it's just an interesting idea that I think Spike asks a question and that, you know, obviously doesn't answer, but uh, how much is personal history important to people? Are we bound by, you know, genetics? Are we like, predetermined to behave a certain way? Is sometimes that limit, you know, the choices that you make in life does it actually get in the way of who you are or or does it do the opposite? Does it actually empower you and make you more um, certain or feel uh, connected to the, uh, the people around you? And is, it, is, is it more empowering? And I, and I don't think that he has an answer to it, but I, what I like about it is that the, my character is open. I uh, feel like he's good at his um, job, but he's open to it being different. And I think that was um, one thing I, I, I really liked about him. Right. Also, his heritage as a Jewish person. You know, yeah, it really. I guess what I mean is he has, he has to be open to change. Right. He yeah. can he can be. I don't. He hasn't been uh, confronted. I think with pure hatred, organized hatred. Yeah. But he's open. I, I don't know how you don't let that affect you, and you know internalize it and you know be thoughtful about it. We see also. I mean, um, you know, this movie takes place forty years ago. But uh, you know, you make a lot of you know you and Spike and, and everyone else involved make a lot of references to today um, and to you know what's going on right now. You guys started this movie. Uh, you were in pre-production like right before Charlottesville. Was that right? No, it was. I don't know the timeline actually. Yeah. After. Okay. Or like you started. Okay. Yeah. Well, how did what's going on today affect what you guys were doing in the film? You know, this is not a, uh, t t trying to answer your question, but there, there's obviously an, an, uh, an importance to the story overall that, you know, you want to get right. But then I always feel that you can't play importance. You, um, it's, it's not effective and, or it doesn't help you play the scenes, you know, uh, and sometimes can get in the way. So there wasn't a lot of, there was, I guess, moments w of, uh, us kind of self-reflecting about uh, what the overall story was, but um, uh, in, in, I, I think I probably have a different answer than, than you ask somebody else, but I, I always get lost in the minutia of filmmaking when it comes to actually, like I, I'm not thinking about it so much of, of what it's doing or the importance, I try to treat it as important as everything else, um, or, or that be prepared and show up and don't stand here make sure that it, like it, it, just all these little details is what I'm thinking about and then um, all, all the other kind of big questions I uh, I can't I, I don't think on I think unfortunately you can probably make this movie at any time really and there's right. some kind of which is kind of Spike's point I think yeah. um, well that's you know they're obviously at the ending of the movie there's this direct reference to what happened in Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. um, did you know that was going to be a part of it, or did you, when you saw the film for the first time, was it a surprise? Uh, no, I didn't know it was going to be a part of it, but yes, it was a surprise. I, I haven't seen the the whole thing, but we, when it first uh, was shown at Cannes, yeah. usually I leave and then come back at the end. So I came back right when it cut to the footage of Charlottesville, and like, what a um, and I, obviously the, what you're doing in the lobby it doesn't match the mood of what's happening. Uh, so it was even more jarring to say, oh, I didn't know the movie was ending that way and what a great, um, what a great way to end it. Spike has this great answer about the, you know, that kind of wrote itself into the movie. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about the reaction at, at Cannes, um, you know, showing that movie in, in front of that audience and, and the response that you guys got. I mean, all of the can is very overwhelming because uh, you're walking upstairs and 
like it kind of feels like we're going to sacrifice something together other than watch a movie. Um, but it was very uh, uh, moving. People really responded to um, and what Spike was, you know, the, the questions that Spike was raising, and it was uh, it was good. Yeah, good. And you're surrounded by all the like greats of world cinema there, and they're like you're a part of that too. So I guess that must be kind of like humbling in a sense. Sure. You could. I mean, yes, it, it, things like that are almost uh, too much to take in. I'm not very good at self-reflecting. And then when things that are kind of like, you know, you can't imagine you're in these, um, you're there at can with Spike and this cast and this story, it's, uh, um, it, it's all overwhelming. Yeah. I've been thinking about the film a lot ever since I saw it back in uh, August, I guess it was. Uh, you know, the, the film continues to have this kind of, relevancy throughout this year and I mean I was especially thinking about it after what happened in Pittsburgh you mm -hmm. know? I guess this sort of directly relates to your character as well because you know as uh, you know as a Jewish character in the movie and then what happened there um, I guess can you talk a bit about the film in the context of, of that I mean and the fact that there's still this continuous hatred and violence towards you know people just based on their religion and their race or Yeah, it's it's hard to say the thing uh, that accurately, you know, in the twenty minutes that we have, or however long this is, uh, that summarizes how absurd it all is, and uh, not beyond absurd, uh, um, how damaging it and. Um, Disheartening it is, it, uh, all of it. And, um, obviously, Spike's movie is very good about um, starting it with you know birth of the nation or and kind of ending it with where we are now and and how how much is this has been a part of the conversation in this country for so long and you know whatever I can say about it, it is minimal you know compared to. The atmosphere in the country, everyone's collective hatred about, um, or I shouldn't say hatred, but um, uh, how, how just upsetting it is. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say the good thing to take away from it is the communal uh, sense after, it, you know, the, the sense of community and people coming together afterwards in what better way to do that over, uh, I mean, that's a great thing about the filmmaking or creating anything as a group of people. It's, a, it's this collective group of strangers that are forced to be um, intimate with each other. They're supposed, to, they're forced to be kind of lay everything out on the table in a short amount of time in, in service of something that's bigger than one person. Uh, and that's why I feel like it's storytelling. Uh, know what effect that there's no like the data of, of you know yeah. uh, how it is but um, the communal part of it is uh, is a good takeaway it's, a, it's kind of a, a rambling answer because I, do, I don't really have anything uh, concrete to explain it or, so, or where to go from there I guess it's a hard thing to boil down into a sound bite you know? sure 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 but I guess you know walking away from the movie uh, I haven't seen it a couple of times now uh, maybe an odd thing to say, considering how the film ends, but um, I, I do walk away with a, with a slight sense of hope because at least we're kind of we're having these conversations, right? And we seem to be having them more seriously now than we have in a long time. There's hope. There's I feel like there's hope in identifying things. That's the great thing about maybe this is what a better answer of saying what I'm trying to say about the you know what's the role of um, the uh, uh, movies or you know community. Uh, in this, there's always a, a something empowering of a group of people saying, "Oh, that's it." You know, but I think um, that can't that can't be minimized. Right. Well, it's a really great movie, and oh. uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks a lot.